this video, we will talk about the osteoporosis, including the bone metabolism, role of hormones, risk factors, types of osteoporosis, pathophysiology, symptoms of osteoporosis, diagnosis, prevention, treatment, and the nursing management. As we all know, the bone is a living tissue forming the skeletal system. The bones are responsible for providing the shape and support to the body. They also store a number of minerals including the calcium. The bone is a continuously growing, remodeling and repairing itself. Bone remodeling or metabolism is a continuous process and ongoing process of replacement of old bone tissue by the new bone tissue. This process is accomplished with the help of osteoblastis and the osteoclastis. While the osteoclastis dissolve the bone tissue to release the minerals into the bloodstream by the process of bone resorption, the osteoblastus lay down or build the new bone tissue by the process of bone deposition. Here you can visualize how the osteoclastus are dissolving the bone tissue and how the osteoblastus are developing the new bone tissue. A delicate balance exists between the two processes or the actions of osteoblastus and the osteoclastus. If we look at the term osteoporosis, osteo means bone and porosis means pores. It literally means pores in the bones. Osteoporosis is defined as the reduction in the strength of bone that leads to an increased risk of fractures. There is more bone breakdown than bone formation. There is a decrease in the bone density to the point of potential fracture. The role of hormones. Hormones play an important role in bone metabolism or remodeling. First, we will take the parathyroid gland. When there is a decreased serum calcium level, the parathyroid gland secretes the parathyroid hormone, which increases the osteoclastic activity, increases calcium absorption in the GIT, and reduces calcium loss through urine. All this increases serum calcium. Next, we have our thyroid gland. In response to increased serum calcium, the thyroid gland uh, secretes the calcitonin which reduces osteoclastic activity and thus promotes bone formation. Then we have the estrogen. This hormone shortens the life of osteoclastus by the process of apoptosis, thus promoting bone formation. But after menopause, the levels of estrogen drastically fall which increases the chances of osteoporosis in a post-menopausal woman. In males, the hormone testosterone is converted to estrogen and it works in the same manner as in females. Since the levels of testosterone fall in old age, the older males have an increased risk of osteoporosis. There are several risk factors for developing osteoporosis. You can remember them by remembering the mnemonic calcium. C for calcium and vitamin D deficiency. A for age. With age, the osteoblastic activity gradually slows down while the osteoclastic activity continues. Also with age, the levels of estrogen and testosterone levels fall. L for lifestyle, including smoking, drinking alcohol or sedentary lifestyle. C for Caucasian and Asian ethnicities, particularly in women. I for inherited, the risk for osteoporosis can be inherited. U for being underweight, having a BMI of less than 19. M for medications like glucocorticoids or anticonvulsants. The glucocorticoids, if used for longer than 3 months, enhance osteoclastic activity. Also, anticonvulsants do the same. Types of osteoporosis include postmenopausal osteoporosis, which is caused by decreased estrogen levels, and senile type which is due to aging and affects both men and women. Now we will deal with the pathophysiology of the osteoporosis. Aging, menopause, calcium and vitamin D deficiency and other factors lead to increased bone resorption and reduced bone formation, which means the bones are being dissolved more quickly as compared to new bone formation, causing decreased total bone mass. This leads to the formation of pores in bones means the bones start to become thinner, which makes them brittle and fragile, which ultimately can cause fractures. Now the symptoms of osteoporosis. You can remember the symptoms by the mnemonic frail, as the bones in osteoporosis become frail or weak, 
F stands for fractures mostly of hips, spine and wrist. R for rounding of upper back called Dowager's hump. It is a severe deformity of the upper back caused by spinal fractures. Sometimes the person may be asymptomatic. I for inch of height lost which is almost 2 to 3 inch and is due to the uh, vertebral fractures. Low back, neck and hip pain which may be on palpation or during activity. Now how can we diagnose the osteoporosis? We can use the DEXA scan or dual energy x-ray absorptiometry which uses low doses of x-rays to see how dense the bones are which is then compared to the bone density of a healthy adult of same age and ethnicity. The result of the DEXA scan is presented as T-score. A T-score of less than or equal to negative of 2.5 confirms the diagnosis of osteoporosis. Let's take a look at the prevention of osteoporosis. It is quite simple and includes things like smoking cessation, regular exercise, taking enough calcium and vitamin D, and stopping alcohol consumption. Now the treatment or medical management of osteoporosis. Calcium and vitamin D supplements. The first line drugs for osteoporosis are bisphosphonates like abandronate, zolidronic acid, etc. These drugs reduce bone breakdown by shortening the life of osteoclastis and prolonging the life of osteoblastis. One of the main side effects of uh, bisphosphonates includes flu-like symptoms. Calcitonin causes serum calcium to be deposited into the bones by osteoblastis. A diuretic drug called hydrochlorothiazide helps to increase calcium reabsorption in the renal tubules. Teriparatide, which is a synthetic parathyroid hormone. You may think that parathyroid hormone causes bone resorption, so why are we giving this to osteoporosis patients? Well, it is because when under continuous exposure of parathyroid hormone, the bone undergoes resorption more than formation, while intermittent exposure to low-dose parathyroid hormone or teriparatide induces bone formation than bone resorption. Next is the hormone replacement like raloxifene, which is a selective estrogen receptor modulator. This is useful in postmenopausal women, but it should be used for a short term as long-term use can result in stroke or clot formation. Denosumab, which is a monoclonal antibody, reduces formation, functions, and survival of the osteoclastus. Also advise the patient for weight-bearing exercises. Let's look at the nursing management of osteoporosis. Relieving pain. Advise the patient to rest in bed in a spine or sideline position several times a day. Knee flexion increases comfort. Intermittent uh, local heat and back rubs promote muscle relaxation promoting understanding of osteoporosis and treatment regimens patient education focuses on factors influencing development of osteoporosis interventions to arrest or slow the process of osteoporosis and measures to relieve the symptoms the nurse encourages walking and good body mechanics and good body posture instruct daily intake of calcium vitamin d importance of exposure to sunlight and the importance of a balanced diet. Finally, administer the medications if prescribed. Thank you. That was all about the osteoporosis.